Hi everyone. Hi everybody. In today's video, we're going to be talking more about cuticle. Yay, <laughs> more videos about cuticle, but it's so important. And I still get a lot of questions on what to do when the cuticle or eponychium or whatever people are calling it is overgrown. So obviously that's a very important topic. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the terms so we understand what we're talking about. So very quickly, I'm actually going to link an article written by Doug Shun with a diagram, so which explains a little bit more in depth what I'm talking about. So go and check it out, it's in the description box. But very quickly, I'm going to kind of explain to you and show. So first of all, cuticle is, and we removed a nail polish from, from the, these nails with pure acetone, and that kind of shows the cuticle a little bit more, so forgive me the, the super dry nails. Um, okay, so the cuticle, is this white part as you can see that kind of is stuck on a nail and it's um, visible right here this part of the nail sorry this part of the skin here is not a cuticle this is a proximal nail fold so this is the part of this skin that actually folds underneath and this is the edge of it so this is the fold proximal nail fold and this area sometimes gets dry or damaged and it cracks when it's dry. And then what people do very often is they cut it or they abrade it, they file it, which then the skin tries to protect itself and grows thicker and grows, grows calloused. So the first thing to remember is when you see this area dry, treat it, don't cut it, don't abuse it because this is damaged skin. So. So again, this is proximal nail fold right here. This is a nail plate, not a nail bed. Nail bed is underneath. So the nail plate sits on the nail bed. This is free edge, the white part. So the cuticle, what it is, it's actually, it sells that this part of the skin that's underneath sheds. And I'm gonna show you how this looks. So let's say this is a towel folded, right? So this is that proximal nail fold. This is that living skin here. So this is this. So this edge here is the proxim proximal nail fold, which sometimes get keratinized. So it gets hardened, it gets calloused. Underneath that part, this has a very thin layer of cells that's called eponychium. And the eponychium actually sheds the cuticle. So you can't have overgrown eponychium. What is overgrown sometimes is the proximal nail fold. So this is a living skin. The cuticle is a dead skin. So you don't want to be abrading, filing, cutting a living skin. A living skin needs to be protected. So a lot of times people come in to a salon with this area being stretched sometimes or cracked and overgrown. So when it's stretched, and actually you had that on your nails when we didn't do your manicure, so I have a picture which I'm going to show. So what I do with those clients is I tell them that it takes few manicures to, for that skin to start looking better. It's not an instant process, it just takes a couple weeks and usually people are okay with that. So what I do is I gently push that area I first use a cuticle remover and I push that area, which I'm going to show you um, how to do it exactly. And after two, three manicures, what happens is this kind of recedes back very, very gently. And then there was pretty much nothing to do, but the trick is to do this on a regular basis to do this, do this weekly. So what happens is initially when there was a flap of skin and you really dig and push underneath, this flap is going to kind of like stand up and the next day, if you obviously, if you don't cut it, it's going to dry up and then it's going to bother the client. So what I suggest is just doing that gently and then go crazy on your creams, which I'm going to show you later, which, which creams to use, which creams really, really help. My favorite product right now, we went over quite a few cuticle removers and I'm going to link the, the video below as well is this product, the Blue Cross. I find this one is the most effective. It's super cheap, it's available everywhere. So this is a huge bottle. So what I did, I tried to put it into um, like three different bottles to see which one is most effective. 
So I think personally, I prefer this one. So what we're going to do here is, so these products, I'm not gonna kind of go um, in a lot of detail about these products, but they are, um, they could be irritating. So you don't wanna be leaving them on the skin for too long. So you wanna put it on the nail plate where the cuticle is. Don't like smear it all over the skin. It's just not necessary, right? So that's all you need. Now this bottle, I think I like the brush the most because with this, it kind of drips all over the place and you kind of have to move it. And then you're gonna use your finger. And the thing is, it can irritate the skin. So don't touch it too much with your fingers, but maybe you can use like a Q-tip or something if you wanna. I would think that uh, using this one would be more ideal Probably, because yeah. you lose less material yeah, and it's exactly. far more accurate. Yeah. And it lays down a thin layer yeah. versus you know, a copious amount, which is not required. You're wasting material and uh, it's just, it's just messy. In a well. salon, sometimes Same using- the dropper. True, but so if you obviously are using it on yourself, I would say bottle is a, is a good idea. If you're using it, losing it. If you're using it in a salon, you know, you don't want to be touching, you know, um, too much, like with the brush, multiple clients, right. it's not very hygienic. So you kind of drop it and maybe then move it with your, if you're wearing a glove, just kind of move it, right? Mm -hmm. So here, this product actually works very fast. So what you're going to do is just to wait maybe a minute. And what I do is I do, when I do my own manicures, I use, apply it on one hand, I give it a minute or two, and then I start removing the cuticle. You see how this part just lifts? So do this as far as as you can. Don't shove this underneath too far. Because this don't area- don't dig. You yeah, don't exactly. need to use a lot of pressure. Just be very gentle. Yeah, go like, this camera is moving. Um, parallel with the nail, with the tool. You can also use this kind of tool. So this way, I use it sideways. This is actually very good as well. I think I prefer this. This to be one? Honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's very gentle. It's very gentle. Like you can feel it's just. Yeah. Yeah. Like to me, that's like probably. So the you're not tool. using it this way, right. but you're using it this mm -hmm. way. So you see, when you do this every week, there is nothing pretty much to do, and this this is this is the truth. You just have to keep at it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, it's very important to wash this off. So at home, if you're using this at home, you can also um, use this between, do this between manicures, even if your nails are polished. Uh, you wanna make sure you wash it off. So here we're going to spray it with water and just give it a good amount of water. Because these products are alkaline, so they kind of break down the skin, which is fine. Like if it's breaking down the dead skin, which is the cuticle on top of the nail, but we don't want to be breaking down the living skin, which is the proximal nail fault. I mean, little exfoliation is okay, but too much is going to uh, not be good for the nails. So again, I can't stress enough doing this very, very gently. Mm -hmm. And you know, even if uh, even if you have to do it three days later or something, it's better than overdoing it. Sometimes I, I go over with this part. because so you see, you can kind of get a little bit more, especially if I'm polishing. Again, very, very gently. You want to make sure to, that you uh, create a very nice clean surface for the nail polish. If you have areas that are um, like cracked, that you have like a piece of skin that's, that's um, sticking up, and it's going to tear if you just leave it, then obviously trim that little piece of skin, but don't go around that whole, whole area and trim everything. Because you know, once you start doing that, you will never be able to stop because that skin is just going to try to protect itself from further, further trauma 
and, um, and it's going to become much, much thicker. I'm going to clean this off again just to make sure. And I'm going to now show you the creams that I use and what I do on a regular basis for my nails and what I recommend to clients. So, um, after I wash my hands, after every time I wash my hands, because you know, when you really think about it, it's if you have a dry face, dry skin on your face, going for facial once a month is not gonna make a huge difference, right? So you have to apply creams after each time you wash your hands. So after I wash my hands, I grab, it's this product. I find this one is the lightest product, so I don't find that my skin is sticky and, and oily. Um, so just a small amount, just like this, on my hands. I'm going to link everything below as well. And then I dab nail oil. So actually I usually do the oil first and then just small amount. And I actually show this to clients because they think that they have to use a lot for it to be effective and they're working around with like, I actually do the oil first. Um, and then I just put the cream. So now I've grabbed the cream and then I just rub it in. And you know what, even if it feels that it's a little bit too much, you can just grab a towel and remove the excess and you're done after each time you wash your hands. And you see, like, there is nothing to cut. This area looks really nice and healthy. No inflammation, nothing. So now, at night, I use two different things. Either or, not both. So I like this cream because it has 10% urea in it. Urea is very moisturizing. It brings moisture to the surface of the skin and it's also a little bit exfoliating. So this one has urea and it has, um, oops, it has ceramides, which repair the skin. So, but this cream is a little bit more sticky. Um, I also use a pretty small amount, but I find that it's a little bit too sticky to use it during the day. Um, so I use it at night before I go to bed on my hands and my feet. It's not greasy, but it's just a little sticky, I find. Urea usually is a little sticky. So I just make sure that I rub it in my, the skin around the nails as well, underneath. I'm going to leave a link below as well for this one. There is also a lighter version of this cream, which is which has 5% urea, and this one is in the tube. I use this one as well sometimes, so in the winter it's great. But it's still, compared to the CeraVe, it's still a little bit more... Um, can you put it on your hands and see how it feels? Okay. If it feels sticky to you. So this and this... Actually, no, let's do this. So it goes kind of like this. How does it feel? I wouldn't say sticky. It's it, but it absorbs it pretty quickly. Of, it has like a velvety. Yeah, kind exactly. Of feel. Yeah. I don't mind it. It's okay. It's not heavy, no. right? Okay. No. So now this is um, something that I have been using for a little bit now, and it's really, really good. So this one has also 10% urea and it has also salicylic acid, which is an exfoliant, which is great. This I also use at night. So I use this on my feet and my hands. Um, and then what I do is I, when I put it on my, on my feet, I put little fluffy socks for a few minutes. I walk around like that. And then um, usually it absorbs by then. But this is um, like a gel almost. It's like it has Vaseline in it, I think, which is actually, by the way, very good. So you see, it's um, it's quite quite greasy, um, and then I just kind of grab, put a little bit on my nails, just like this. <clears throat> and per foot, I use a small amount, like I would use this much per foot. You don't need more; you just need a small amount, and that's it. So this is great. Um, also, I put it around the around the nails on my feet, so I highly recommend it. So these are the four products. I mean, obviously you don't need them 
all, but I would suggest for sure this one. I would say probably this one or try this one. This is good because it's in the tube so you can grab it. I don't think, no, they actually have a hand cream, but this one I think is the lightest, so whatever. I like try this them. One. You like this one the most, eh? Mm -hmm. And actually they have a very good um, wash. Another very important yes. thing is don't overwash with harsh soaps because what they do is they, they disrupt the skin. Right, so they really um, remove all the surface oils, which the oils are what kind of keeps your skin sealed together, right? Really so, dries your skin yeah, out. it really dries your it's skin. So, especially those hand sanitizers on top mm. of it. So, you don't want to overuse them. Just wash your hands and just apply the, the lotion. But, yeah, this the lotion is the best, is the lightest. They have a very good um, facial wash that I use also as my, my hand wash. And you need a small amount, you don't need the whole pump, you need just like a little bead of product. And it's called the, the foaming face wash for the oily skin, I believe. Normal to oily. It's in the green with a green um, label. Yes. So, you know, kind of wrapping it up. The most important part is not underdoing it, not overdoing it with the cutting, but just being somewhere in the middle. So just being very gentle with very gentle manicures and being very regular with them. So once a week, it takes like not even 10 minutes to do and it saves you a lot of time in the long run and the area looks much better when it's not all puffy and inflamed and um, calloused. Okay, so I hope you find this video helpful. Again, the link to Doug Shun's article you can find below and let me know if you have any questions below as well. Thank you so much for watching, bye. bye.